Good afternoon from New York City to all our viewers in North America, Europe, Romania, and uh, anywhere in the world. Welcome at the new edition of the Leon Ferraro Conferences Online, one of our permanent series uh, centered upon themes, topics relevant in the transatlantic context and featuring artists, scholars, experts on both sides of the Atlantic. Our guest today is uh, probably the most famous uh, Romanian in North America nowadays, director and producer Alexander Nanau, the um, uh, author of um, the documentary um, Collective, Collective, uh, which is uh, by no means the um, cinematic re revelation of the season. And, um, uh, the only Romanian film ever to have been shortlisted in two Oscar categories, uh, Best Documentary and Best International Feature Film. Uh, Collective is a uh, very powerful uh, film, is an um, eye-opening, disturbing um, uh, documentary uh, following the aftermath of um, the biggest uh, civilian tragedy in uh, Romania in recent mem memory, the big deadly fire at uh, Klubul Collective, a uh, collective club in Bucharest in um, October 2015 that claimed um, 64, um, 64 dead and uh, 146 um, uh, badly injured, um, uh, mutilated, um, um, people. Uh, it was a um, it was a um, huge uh, catastrophe, and the film uh, reveals with um, minutious care the web of uh, corruption, uh, intertwined economic and political uh, interest, negligence that um, created this uh, big uh, tragedy, and that would sh uh, send shock waves. Uh, in all corners of um, Romanian uh, society. Uh, this um, uh, amazing uh, film um, has been literally showered with uh, prizes, uh, accolades, um, nominations. Um, here are uh, very quickly some of them, even though the, uh, the list is very, very, very long. It was the best documentary at European Film Awards. It was the best foreign language film at National Society of Film Critics. It was the best documentary um, uh, um, award, received the best documentary award, uh, uh, awarded by several um, uh, critic circles uh, from Toronto to London, from Boston to uh, LA. Um, recently was the best uh, documentary at uh, Satellites um, Awards uh, and, and many, many other prizes. But of course, um, Alexander Nanau is no stranger to success. Um, he, uh, his uh, previous uh, docu documentaries were also very well uh, received. He was um, raised and educated in Romania and uh, Germany. His first documentary was uh, made in uh, Germany uh, and um, was also uh, very, very well received. Um, Peter uh, Zadek uh, instanirt uh, per Gint, uh, Peter Zadek uh, staging uh, per Gint, followed in Romania by um, the world according to Jon B and uh, Toto and his uh, sisters, two um, extraordinary character studies uh, that um, attracted uh, a lot of attentions and received uh, several uh, prizes. Um, of course, um, uh, although uh, successful, uh, those uh, the documentaries are worth seeing uh, for those who haven't had the chance to, to see it already, uh, cannot compare to the fantastic exposure uh, collective enjoys um, nowadays. Uh, Alex, um, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for having me. I would uh, start by asking you, because 
you know, your, your film um, has been so, so successful um, throughout the world. Uh, do you think that uh, the reception was in any way different according to geographies of culture or people understood pretty much the same thing everywhere in the world? Uh, it's a strange thing because uh, we expected, let's say, to, you know, to encounter different, a different reception from society to society, from more developed to less developed societies or democracies. Uh, but since we started the film uh, by in the second half of 2019 in Venice, we saw basically the same reaction all over the world. So the, the audience reacts in the same way and we always have the same feeling that uh, they're, the, the way they remain speechless, but also angry, it seems, after the film has something to do with a global phenomenon that we are all basically feeling that, uh, you know, we are all in the same boat in a way, the world became really small now. Of course. Uh, and people feel, seem to feel as if they understand suddenly that the power of their own lives was taken from them, no matter where they live. And there is this it seems that there's a, um, a constant fear, and it's also what we felt by end of 2019, that people fear that the societies they're living in will not function anymore, and not in a certain amount of time, but it could happen tomorrow. So the shocks that, that we all received beginning with 2016 all around the world, when populists really uh, took over aggressively different uh, democracies, uh, it gave us all the feeling that incompetent, corrupt governments have taken over the countries and are about to dismantle basically the state institutions and with them the democracy and with it the, the social contract. Uh, and so basically it's uh, so many more societies now have the feeling what it means to be Romanian. <laughs> um, with which is um, which is very um, um, which is very interesting also because um, the, the, uh, do you feel that this this reaction was um, and this um, uh, the, this um, very similar reaction in many many other places was also um, attributable to attributed to the uh, to the fact that people somehow feel the same thing about. Um, uh, about their politicians, about political uh, power in general, and it's n n nothing uh, um, exclusively related to our country, but it's something like a general film. I don't want to imply that, I mean, this film is amazing on every level. I mean, it's aesthetically, it's definitely a, 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 a extraordinary film. But at the same time, maybe the success and the, the fact that so many people identified with the theme don't you feel that may be attributable to the attributed to the fact that uh, that this general feeling of discontent with uh, political uh, power is in fact more general that we believe more universal? Yes, I think there are two elements to it. So one, one is for sure the uh, distrust in 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 the power and in those that govern the countries and. Uh, in their real intentions, and that their real intentions are not anymore uh, primarily focused on serving society or serving the citizens in, and with it uh, the security of the citizens. Uh, but this comes together basically with um, the, basically the major threat of the times we're living in, uh, which is uh, disinformation uh, and the fact that we lose basically um, any control over truth. We can't control anymore our reality through communication and information uh, because basically all the fake news and, and the fact that information is basically manipulated all the time gives us the feeling that we, we lose control. Uh, and I think the fact that the film also uh, by showing the mechanisms of uh, in journalistic investigations and by making it clear to, to the viewer how it works and how 
manipulation works and how journalists can fight manipulation and what what responsibility lies on 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 the shoulders of journalists I, I think this comes together with the distrust in power with also the distrust in any information people get right now even from the from the main media outlets so for, from the uh, uh, how do you call it for the uh, mainstream media that's right and um of course it's it's a uh, it's a film with uh, with internet with the universal appeal it was very very aptly demonstrated by the by the reception uh, throughout the world but of course it's a film about romania it's a film about a romanian uh, a romanian tragedy and a tragedy that um uh, that really shook the the foundations of political life and uh, uh, brought about um uh, brought about social and political changes. Um, uh, how was the film um, received in Romania? What was the reception there where people were in a way very familiar with that, uh, that um, social catastrophe, that collective loss? Yeah, I'm not sure that it really shook or uh, sent waves uh, about politics because my feeling is that the political sphere remained pretty immune since the collective incident to any change and they, they you know, they resist change. Uh, for sure, they uh, say something else and they say that everything is new now and every day we read in the papers how uh, uh, even this uh, wonderful new government, uh, uh, one part of it is placing all the time basically politically appointed incompetent people into, in, into public, uh, into, uh, public institutions. Um, I think that basically what, uh, what resonates with the people is something else. Uh, they, I think we always knew how corrupt Romanian politics are. And we always knew that corruption in Romania is really basically engraved in any level of society. So it, the film doesn't tell anything new, but I think that what the film does is that it makes in a way by, by um, portraying the, the characters that fight basically against this, uh, this system or however you want to call it, it makes clear to the viewer that um, Every, every, everyone is responsible for this. So every single citizen is basically responsible for how he shapes or not the society around him. And we see in the film basically uh, whistleblowers that have the courage to, yeah. uh, uh, to influence the society around them in a good way and to blow the whistle and to uh, take basically the, the, the threat and the responsibility upon them to um, endanger their own life in order to do or, or to stand up to their values. And this is, I think, more of a shock to see that it is a society which is as it is because everybody uh, is participating in it and because people let that happen. But you once said that um, by doing the film, you felt that you witnessed a um, big historical inflection point. And I think you, 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 you thought of, and maybe you can elaborate a little bit on, on, on that point, uh, you, um, a collective um, brought down the government uh, and also uh, led to massive mobilization of, uh, um, in some segments uh, of society that were very westernized and, uh, and progressive. What, what do you mean by when you said that you, you've had this feeling that something fundamentally important happened after the, uh, this, um, uh, this uh, huge tragedy? I think the important thing that happened is that uh, people didn't accept any more power to be, you know, to misuse basically the, the, uh, the power and to be uh, that corrupt because everybody realized that corruption is really not only about the fact that uh, the political class is stealing all our tax money, uh, but the result of it is that it also kills us. It's really killing people. And uh, 
that's what we also see in the film, although we knew it because it was basically in the news all the time during 2016 that the, 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 the healthcare system in Romania is killing people. And at the same time, the health officials and politicians uh, don't stop lying about how the, what the real state of the healthcare system is. Um, and the other change I think is for sure, the civil society developed immensely in Romania, right? We have now NGOs that build hospitals with private money because the state didn't do it with the tax money. They, you know, the politicians took care to, to steal it through the managers and all the ways to, to, to steal the money out of the public sector of the, of the healthcare system. Uh, and it's something that, but it's something that also happened in the rest of the world. You know, when Trump came, came in and Bolsonaro and so forth, people started to become aware of how politics work and how the political system basically is built. Uh, and, and people started to get involved basically in public life and really care about uh, the, uh, you know, about the way they, they, they really influence their own society. Uh, and yeah, you know what happened afterwards. I mean, for sure, one year later in 2017, uh, we had even bigger demonstrations and after collective, we had uh, uh, an administration that said very clearly and openly, we're gonna change the law and we'll make corruption uh, from now on legal. Uh, and the society reacted to that. I'm not sure that the society would have reacted to it if there wouldn't have been collective, if, if there wouldn't have been this point of awakening in a way. Yeah, and this society managed to stop all these uh, attempts and also... Uh, partly, you know, that, partly. That, yeah, in, 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 in some measure and was uh, definitely um, acknowledged by the whole world about about this uh, fantastic upheaval against uh, against um, a state of play that wasn't uh, was no longer acceptable. Uh, you are always, of course, asked about the film, about the experience of making this film, about the reception. But I would like to um, to talk a little bit about your formative years, about your. Um, identity, because I think you have um, talked less about uh, about it, and I, I think it's an interesting uh, uh, it's in, it's an interesting component of your uh, um, of your um, um, artistic identity, I should say. You um, um, uh, are um, uh, raised and educated in Romania. Uh, you left Romania when you are very, very young and then moved to uh, Germany where you uh, completed your studies and lived for, uh, um, for quite, uh, quite some time. Uh, you are um, uh, c coming from a, um, uh, the, um, German, uh, the German group of, uh, of Romanians. Uh, I mean, you heard the, the, the German Saxon, uh, the Saxons of yeah, Germany. Party, party. I'm part, part, party, party. I'm, yeah. yeah. I belong to more minorities than yeah. that. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I, and, but you have this dual, uh, this dual uh, belonging, I would say, to Romania, to Germany. Uh, you um, started making films in, in after, um, after graduating. Uh, there, starting making films in Germany, then moved uh, to Romania, uh, and uh, and continue your uh, film career there. How does this um, uh, this German Romanian um, uh, identity interplays? How how does it affect um, if uh, if it does affect your uh, artistic um, uh, artistic choices? Um, I, I think the most obvious thing is that I was always, I, you know, also since I was young, I never felt that I belong somewhere. So basically it, it placed me always in a position of, uh, of uh, being an outsider, feeling as an outsider and, and having this, uh, which I think is, a, is a, a basically, um, a good position to be in, to be able to, to observe the others and, and to, to stay on the, many times on the outside, because even in Romania, I, I grew up basically with the idea, we're going to leave Romania. So since I was 
three in our house. That was the only yeah, uh, the only theme because our whole family was leaving. But we did, we didn't know that uh, we had uh, a relative in the family which was not even a direct relative. He was a half brother of my grandfather, who was. Um, uh, you know, in the Securitate, and uh, he blocked basically our, our case. And only in 89, uh, after basically six years of fighting uh, with the authorities, somebody showed my father our file and told him to give up because and there since, is no yeah. since the beginning, uh, there, there's a paper in the file from this relative that is basically prohibiting uh, our case to go further and so we only could escape uh, in 1990 in march 1990 uh, then in germany it, it was the same thing i mean uh, you know when you arrive as a o, o, although you belong to let's say partly to the german minority and you speak the language and well, you were brought up uh, german basically uh, it doesn't mean that in germany you belong to the society i mean you arrive in a country where as a kid, you are told many times by other kids to, to uh, leave back to where you come from. Uh, but um, I mean, I, I, had, I was lucky because I, I started to, to also do theater quite early. And, uh, you know, in theater, basically, I, I grew up in, in an environment where everybody was basically of very different ethnicities and from very different. Uh, uh, corners of the world uh, and uh, so basically I that that was my artistic upbringing to, to, to grow up with uh, you know in a creative environment uh, in, in theater uh, then I went to film school in Berlin yeah. I worked uh, as a first AD in for uh, uh, film productions for, for uh, fiction film productions uh, and then I came back to Romania basically out of curiosity because I read in the paper, uh, I think in 2006, that there were more and more articles about the fact that Romania is joining the European Union. And I got, I became really curious about this uh, anomaly, you know, because the last time I saw Romania, uh, it didn't seem like a country that uh, could um, align it. <laughs> <Okay. with> Surprise. <laughs> with the Western world. Uh, <laughs> And I came back and I discovered basically that uh, I left at the time when the country was basically uh, starting to, um, to, you know, to not to reform, but to basically to be born. It, it was, the, you know, the 90s were really the, the, the time where this country started to be reborn. And I, I realized that as a kid, I didn't understand enough. And I became very curious about really understanding the, the process of a society because if I understood the process in Germany because I also was working with a lot of people that came out of the 68 mm -hmm. uh, times and that did art in the 68 and uh, so I, I really learned you know from from people that were right there and and, and I, I knew what it meant and what, what changed the German society went through Mm -hmm. uh, and what it meant also in Germany that even in 68, the, 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 all, all administration, all German administration was basically still uh, a nest full of, of Nazis. Uh, people don't think about it, that Germany in 68 and until the 70s was still a, a nest full of Nazis that only then were basically kicked out by a young generation that refused to identify anymore with their parents' generation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's also what I felt with Collective, that it's it might be a turning point in the Romanian society of a young generation claims basically it is now our time, our society we want to live by our values, not by our parents' values that tolerated basically uh, this co corruption inflicted uh, uh, society that is not built on meritocracy, but as a communist system, it's just built on thugs that uh, take over uh, power and positions. Um, and so, yeah, I started to come to go back and forth to so make also films here. And I think I, I really moved uh, to Romania maybe in 2015. For good. <laughs> um, and, um, but I'm not sure for good. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, 
I, 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 I prefer to believe that I would uh, keep being on the road all the time. No, no, it's not. I mean, for a, for a filmmaker nowadays, of course, uh, being on the road is the natural state, I would say. And uh, there are only temporary bases. But um, uh, in your, uh, while in your formative years, you were very, um, uh, with a, you were very much close to a great uh, theater, German theater the director, and you were, uh, were training along, uh, along him, um, Peter Zadek, and uh, your first film was uh, amazing uh, also uh, because for the first time somebody was allowed to uh, assist and even more so film uh, one of his um, uh, famously secretive, secretive um, uh, rehearsals. Um, but you were uh, definitely uh, trained, uh, were training as a theater director. You were also a photographer. Uh, so you have this, uh, you have this uh, artistic interest. Um, how do you think they helped you in your future career as a successful um, documentary uh, director? Um, what, what, was, uh, what do you think is important in the way you see the world, in the way you work, by this uh, background? Oh, that's hard to say how, I mean, I, I don't think that uh, maybe, that, I don't think that that makes, makes for, you know, if you are successful or not. I mean, it's, uh, there are so many factors and uh, also a lot of yes. luck uh, and uh, basically most of all hard work that, that goes into, you know, trying to become successful or to have successful, to make successful work so that you can make more work and people trust you and, and finance your next work. But- um, People definitely trust you now, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, not politicians. Uh, so I think that, you know, working in theater because we, we work basically in different, also in different countries and different cities uh, and we really work with, the, with, you know, the best German actors wow. uh, on a very high level. And the, the, uh, the theater plays that we were doing were, you know, from Brecht to British theater, uh, Ibsen. And I think that the most important thing was for me, uh, what I learned about uh, drama, uh, that it was a time when I was basically uh, introduced to a lot of culture from you know Shakespeare to today uh, and even you know when we made a play for example um, we had every second evening uh, after rehearsals which were very closed and very focused and there was no such thing as people have to go and have uh, to take care of their family when we were rehearsing like that was really like a, a, a very uh, protected oh, space yeah. and it was very professional uh, and even during this this place we were watching a lot of films so when we were making a play referring to different times when we were thinking about in which time would we set the play we were really with with the whole team watching films and that means also that we watched like films from the 20s up to uh, today and so the whole thing is uh, was formative in terms of the way I, you know, I could um, take in culture basically. Uh, and uh, working with actors in theater is a privilege because you have time and you have time to watch people and you have time to understand how people uh, function, if that's the right word to, to use for people. Uh, and you have time to learn something about how you communicate with people uh, without words. How, how basically directing never works. There's no recipe, there's no thing that, it's not about the way you talk to people, it's about the way you communicate even non-verbally to people through, you know, the way you behave, the way, many things. Uh, and I think this, this informed very much my way of working even with non-professionals basically with, with real people and the way I... With the subjects of your documentaries, right? Exactly, and the way I co communicate and, and how, you know, they they get to feel comfortable yeah. pretty pretty fast and, 
and I am able to uh, capture with the camera basically uh, an, uh, an authentic core of these people. Because for sure, I never say that uh, it's as if I would not be there. I don't believe in that. Even science shows us that observing something changes the atomic structure of, of that something. Uh, but I think that um, the job in observation document filmmaker making is to be able to uh, capture these glimpses of authenticity in people. Yeah, and, uh, and you have been praised for the extraordinary level of access that your film showed, the fact that you have, um, you have uh, gained the access in parts of your subjects' lives that, you know, uh, is quite un unprecedented or very, very rare. Um, and now what about photography? Is, um, did it uh, impact the way you film, the way you frame, the way you see the world um, around you? What was uh, its influence on your uh, artistic choices? Yeah, I would say that photography for me is more like a, a hobby. I mean, I was never a, really a professional, I, for sure. I, I, I had uh, uh, pictures published, but I think in, in today's world, this is nothing. I mean, there are pictures of, on, on, on Instagram and Pinterest that are fabulous. Everybody gets- We're not talking about that. <laughs> so, um, no, but it's, it, it became important to me um, to understand what it means to perceive the world through, through a lens. Uh, and it, inf it informed for sure the, why I also decide to shoot my own films uh, and also shoot other people's uh, films. Um, and uh, yeah, the way I think about storytelling is always basically through through the lens. And um, talking about editing, do you, you spend a lot of time in the editing room? Uh, you cut and recut and talk to people and come back to the editing room. Uh, even for uh, for collective, uh, that has been a long, long process and sometimes very, very painful and 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 uh, and complicated. Um, wh why do you? Why do you uh, place so much emphasis on this? I mean, of course, it's an important part of in making a film, but in your case, you are particularly, uh, particularly careful with all these details and always coming back to, uh, to the editing room and uh, rearranging the scenes and rearranging the, the cuts. Um, uh, so that, as you, I think you once said that as if, you know, it's as if, you know, the, the story flows by itself, as it's, uh, it's, there is the natural feeling that there is no cut there, there is no uh, human uh, directorial um, intervention, that it's just happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that that's basically the art of filmmaking. I think um, Ken Loach said something like, um, a film has to look and, and feel for a viewer so simple as if anybody could have made it. Or, and I think that's, that's uh, I mean, there, there are many reasons why you, why you work for so long um, on, on the editing. One is for sure what I said about authenticity. Mm -hmm. You really look for uh, finding a form in which you feel that you've touched the most authentic version of, of the characters you have followed. Um, and then there is also the question of time, how much time you need to become objective because there, there's one part, you know, there's you as a private person with your uh, personal opinions, let's say. Uh, but I think as a documentary filmmaker and also as a storyteller, uh, you have to have a certain objectivity because my highest aim is to achieve with every cut and every uh, time the, the, the wheel of the story turns, I want to achieve that the viewer starts thinking, that the viewer starts reflecting on things, that the viewer gets involved and that it becomes his story that he is basically solving, that, that he's not only a, 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 a absorbing or uh, just a passive of... viewer you know and uh, it yeah. creates the film at the same time as you are 
Exactly, and for that, it's I think it's very important for the for the filmmaker, also for the author, but in any art, I think it's important for the for the author to not be that visible because I'm I'm not a big fan of uh, of art where the artist is so <laughs> visible. I think uh, no matter how smart some people think they are as artists, uh, it's always you will always be less smart than. Uh, the the sum of an audience in a cinema room or uh, in front of a picture in a museum uh, and uh, I think that life is so much more complex and smart uh, that basically you have to be um, you're just orchestrating basically what 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 you find but without saying like oh and now I'm so smart I will tell you something that you have not thought about and whenever I see such work that is not uh, organic in itself, uh, I, I, I'm not interested, I fall asleep. Yeah, and also probably because you're, um, you're a documentarian, you're a documentary director, and also you are facing in your films uh, surprises and uh, twists uh, in, in the story every day you are shooting, you know, as the experience. Yeah, because life is like yeah, and you, because you life is like that. Yeah. yeah, and life is like this, and indeed. Yeah, and it's just discovering life. I mean, basically what you do is I discover life and then I try to, to pass on this feeling and this experience of discovering life onto the viewer. In, um, um, of course, your success comes um, uh, after a, um, a long string of uh, successes of Romanian uh, cinema. Um, uh, Romanian cinema at the beginning of the 2000s um, witnessed a sort of miraculous renaissance, uh, the birth of so-called uh, Romanian New Wave, um, a group of young uh, filmmakers that really um, uh, made their mark in the world and also made one of uh, the most famous critics, British uh, film critic uh, in the world, um, uh, claim that they reinvented uh, realism. Uh, in any case, it was a very, very powerful, artistically powerful uh, group. How, how do you feel, uh, what, where do you see yourself in relation to this um, artistic group, to this, uh, in the relation to this um, extraordinary burst of uh, creativity that happened in the Romanian cinema in the past, uh, uh, past decade? I mean, first, I think you're right. I, I think that um, the success also of Collective Now uh, is benefiting basically from what they have planted and what, you know, what they've grown basically over years and years and the attention the uh, Romanian cinema uh, got and basically, so they all profited from one another. You know, it was first Puyu, then uh, came, uh, Poroboyu, then came Munjiu, and they all profited from one another, and we are basically in this chain of profiting from, from uh, uh, you know, an incredible, incredible quality of films that do not stop coming out of, of Romania. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I still feel that because I lived somewhere else and I was basically artistically influenced somewhere else, uh, there's there's a difference. I think that somebody who lived in the in Romania through the 90s, that was a very special time and formative years. And my formative years in the 90s were were in a different kind of society. Um, it's hard to say. I it's definitely an, a, a huge and major influence on uh, on how high I set the bar for. Um, being truthful uh, and uh, realistic, let's say, in, the, in, in, in my storytelling. Uh, and also because I make documentaries basically, uh, and fiction films set the bar so high for, for uh, realism, for sure, it's clear to me that I have to be at least at that quality of what you believe when you see it. Uh, but further than that, it's, it's very hard for me to, I, it's very hard to compare from, it's, you know, 
I, I feel that I have my personal work as I feel that every one of them has their own personal work. And it's, I, I'm not sure that it's, for sure they all belong to a generation, which is a different, they are, they're all about 10 years older than me. So it's, it's basically a, a different generation, but uh, I think that every one of them in particular is so unique and interesting. Uh, and it's, it's I'm, I'm not sure it does, um, uh, that it, I would call it, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's fair, let's say, to, you know, to put them into the same thing, although they belong to the same generation, because they're all so, so different and unique. And so I, I feel that my work is different. And I'm not even sure that, uh, you know, people that like that certain films like my films. No, you're definitely right to say that there are so some strong, uh, strong artistic um, individualities in this uh, group, and sometimes it's not uh, fair to consider them the same, the same thing. Although there are many, many aspects that are common to their uh, their films. Yeah, the but famous no, soup in every film. That, that's right. And when when one I don't have soups in my films. I think. <laughs> oh, I have one. Oh, it's true. In total, there's a soup. <laughs> yeah, but not. It's the um, uh, the sequence probably is not that long <laughs> when somebody <laughs> somebody has this soup. <laughs> it was a long take of uh, of uh, of the actor uh, having that uh, that soup. Uh, but um, uh, th there is something very uh, very common to those films, and um, and some uh, some uh, people in Romania. Uh, are complaining and used to complain that, oh, you know, all these Romanian films that we are sending abroad and they receive all these major prizes, you know, are so bleak, you know, are so only bleak, only uh, darkness, only, you know, corruption, uh, uh, corruption um, um, everywhere. Um, what, what, do you, what do you think about this, um, uh, this uh, statement? Uh, is it that to us because we are showing these films abroad, or they are uh, they are shown abroad, or the fact that they are valuable in themselves and they uh, raise a lot of enthusiasm is already a, a great achievement? No, I think they are completely uh, fairly um, showing the Romanian society. This is how the Romanian society is. It is that corrupt and it is that bleak and a society where young people uh, have to count on if their parents have the right relationships uh, or can buy their way into things and there's no meritocracy, that's, that's the Romanian society. Uh, and if people don't like that, then it's fine. Uh, but I must say, I can, I can refer to my films. I don't think that my films, for example, show a bleak and uh, horrible society because the characters in my film that we follow are yeah. incredible, uh, you know, strong, positive characters that really struggle to, to change society around them and not let that yeah. bleak society change them. And I think that's something that is, you know, a thing that is appearing also in my films that it's basically a struggle between the individual and the society, who is basically uh, forming who society, the individual, the individual, is the individual strong enough to stand up to, to his values or his beliefs, and basically to be himself or herself uh, in a society that is corrupted and that is uh, promoting opportunism and so in that regard I think from my point of view my films are as light as it can get there's more light than darkness in them through the, through the characters definitely through some of your characters uh, that your films are truly inspirational and uh, and uh, and one can identify with the struggle of, of these characters although the creative struggle and case of all the films or the family struggles, all these uh, political struggles to get to the truth and justice. Because I believe that in the end, uh, your, uh, your film and especially collective 
is very much about truth, about, as you said, about um, uh, fighting this post-truth society where everything goes, where everything can be apparently truthful, but it, it's not and about justice, about, uh, um, you know, this fabric, that's uh, this value that keeps the uh, fabric of society uh, together. Uh, people are asking us um, where they can see your, uh, your film. Uh, is, uh, is there any platform or where they can, in Romania or- Collective, uh, collective can be seen in Romania on HBO, HBO Go. Yeah. Uh, in the States, it can be seen on many platforms, I think. Uh, they just okay. have to go to- on All the, of them, yeah. Basically on all of them, right? In, yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, on all of them. And also in some, I think there's also a system of cinemas that are selling tickets, even though they are online. So on the Magnolia picture site, there is a long list of cinemas for every city where you can buy a ticket to see the film online. Uh, and then the film is available uh, in basically all European countries right now, I think. It's available in Germany through so MDR, who is a, a, a participant in the production of the film. So it's also a German film in a way. Uh, it's available in the Netherlands, uh, in the whole Nordic countries through so HBO, in Italy all from Eastern tomorrow. Europe. Yeah. All Eastern Europe, in yeah. Italy from yeah. tomorrow on, in Spain, in Portugal very soon, and all around the world. So the film will really be everywhere from Australia to Japan, New Zealand, Mongolia, uh, the whole of South America. Uh, and because, you know, time is, uh, is running out, even though this conversation would uh, go on forever, I know you are very tired because you are, you are online with uh, the interviews uh, promoting your film every hour, every minute of, yeah. the, of the day. But um, we, we got to talk a little bit about this cutthroat campaign to get on the nomination list. It's a, it's a huge, uh, huge undertaking. It's a very complicated, uh, um, very complicated campaign. It uh, is um, um, uh, mobilizing a lot of people and, uh, and the resources. Tell us a little bit about uh, um, what's going on in, uh, uh, in you know fighting to get uh, collective on the uh, nomination list at the Oscars. I mean the campaign is uh, as you know now because uh, uh, the institute is uh, supporting also the campaign and is collaborating. Your, your team is directly collaborating also with with the with our worldwide team. I, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I kept a low profile. <laughs> as you have seen, you know people. You know, from the outside, it might look like, you know, a film gets good press and then it will be or not nominated. As you could see, uh, we are a team of over 60 people, around 70 people that work 24-7 uh, on uh, four continents. Uh, because, you know, the, the people that vote for the Oscars are also in the whole world. Uh, but not only that, but everywhere where you launch a film, you have to get in contact with the press through your publicist and his company that has many people that work on that. Uh, these people have to stay in contact with all the different press out outlets uh, to make sure that they have seen the film, uh, that they find space to, to review it. For sure, nobody can influence how a film is reviewed. So uh, we could never influence the, the press. You don't people. need to reviewers you gotta you gotta write a fantastic review it doesn't work like this no that doesn't work but what has to be done is there's so much output in the world right. that basically you need these people to remind the the journalist when you will come out with the film when it will be available where when it would be a good point for them to decide to review a film or it's uh, in, in such a media, uh, basically a flooded world, only with such a team, you can, you can reach out to, to outlets uh, and inform them about what you're gonna do, when you're gonna do it. And that's a work of months, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and now, as you have seen, you know, like you meet with uh, over 60 people in one meeting to discuss the strategy uh, of, uh, of the film in the world, not only in the States or, you know. Um, 
it's new also for me, for sure. It's the, it's the first for me, it's new for me. I have, you know, I, I basically, we launched the film in 2019 and I'm still working uh, day by day since end of 2019, I'm still working on promoting this film. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and I took the decision for me, it's, yeah, it's a time where, you know, I have to teach by the side to, let's say, earn a living because nobody's paying me for this work. Uh, but because it's such a great thing and we have such an incredible chance to make this film known in the whole world, uh, it's a decision that you take. Okay, I will work now over a year for this. And in order to understand how it works and how it is to reach out into the whole world and have your film shown in the whole world, uh, it's an experience. Uh, indeed, it's, a, it's an experience. Um, even for us, the learning curve is like <laughs> shooting up. Uh, but we are very, very proud to modestly contributing to the uh, to this uh, campaign. Indeed, it's a, it's a huge undertaking. A lot of people, a lot of smart people and very well connected people, I should say. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and world, right? that's, that's why I ask you, because it's important uh, for people to know that in order to be successful at the Oscars, in order to get as high as your film and you as a director um, have, um, have gone, uh, you have to do certain things with professionals, with a certain approaches. And we at the Romanian Cultural Institute were very, very happy and proud to be, uh, to be part of this um, uh, effort. Um, uh, uh, but we, we leave you now because, you know, there are so many Q&As waiting and other interviews waiting. Uh, thank you very much for spending this uh, almost one hour um, with us. And we are a public mainly in, uh, and with our public mainly in North America. We wish you a huge, huge uh, success and a lot of energy to keep up with your busy schedule until March the 15th when the nominations are uh, officially announced. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.